How you doing, Alex? I'm great, Yusuf. How's it going? Smiling all the way because of the beautiful weather outside. Of and course. Stuff. So, Alex, I want to ask you a few questions. You know, what spurred you on to come out to Qatar, uh, apart from the football? Um, well, to tell you the truth, it was fully the football. It was. Um, we've had the, this trip planned for about two years now. Mm. Prior to coming, obviously, there was a big uh, uproar in the media. And, you know, it didn't really put us off. We were just like, oh, right. We had a, I didn't really look into it too much. Mm. You know, little slight ones that I did have, completely abolished by the time I came. You know, mm. we've had an excellent time. The first, you actually, your claim to fame, mm. actually. Yeah. But not yours, but ours. Yeah, yeah. Our perception of you yeah. um, was when you made that video. We got interviewed by TalkSport, and it was only by the, the radio station at first. So anyway, we'd, we'd done you know, a radio interview, mm. and apparently TalkSport, they, they said they had loads of people you know, messaging and saying, you know, what's this all about? What, you know, um, really intrigued about the story. And then we ended up bumping into the same guys again later that evening. And they went, you know, could you do that interview again, but this time on the camera? And the chances of, you know, there was about 60,000 people there. I don't know how we bumped into them again, but, it, you, know, you know, that's it, that's it, you know. <laughs> Literally, you're outside, you're thinking, where can we go? And you bump into this, uh, this guy, this Qatari guy. Mm -hmm. What it was is we befriended them earlier in the day. You know, they, we just bumped into them. They said, you need anything while you're here? You, you, you know, you want to know anything? Or, you know, you're a bit unsure? You know, if you just being friends, if you need anything, just give us a ring. So we went out that night. We went round the, the Pearl in Qatar. Mm. Love, beautiful place. Yeah. On the way back, it was our, the, where our accommodation was for the first four nights. There was a row of shops. Mm. Mm. And we seen him again. We, didn't, we never rang him. We, we seen him again and we thought... What's the chances in that we've seen this bloke again outside the same shop that we've seen him earlier? And he was like, you know what, I, I don't half love your tops because we've got, you know, bespoke England Everton tops. Oh, like, yeah. He's <laughs> like, I've got a friend who's got a line himself. Do you want to cut? He'd love to have you around. So next minute, he comes around, he, um, the Qatari, you know, Sheikh com comes around. And we just jump in and we're whisked away to his, um, his palazzo, his palace. Mm. You know, we're, we're met with s such hospitality and, yeah. and it's just like, you know, do you want a cup of tea? Do you want your cakes and all, all mm. the rest of it? You mm. know, um, went, went round to see all like the animals and all the rest of it. So it was just, it was, we were like, how has this happened? What I can't imagine is like one of the royals in England picking up some oh, no. guy from know, Qatar yeah. and whisking him away to the palace. No, no, no. Maybe Prince, I was just thinking maybe, that maybe be... Prince Harry like, but that's, yeah. that's about maybe, it. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe. Obviously, that was one of the first um, episodes and that, that, that's how everyone got to know you. And then we bumped in to you in Souk Waqif. We were inviting people to understand Qatari culture, mm -hmm. Qatari culture mm -hmm. and... Um, and ultimately, which is linked to Islam, of course, because mm -hmm. a lot of people yeah. have got a lot of stuff in their head about Islam and, and Muslims. So. Mm -hmm. And you're very spiritual yourself. Very spiritual. Is that reawakened within you, some sort of want, uh, need to kind of link yourself? I mean, religion comes mm -hmm. from the term to link. Yeah. To link is oh, religio, right, yeah. mm -hmm. to link yourself mm -hmm. to something, other than just cars and houses and get a wife and mm -hmm. get kids and yeah. <laughs> you know, get old and then retire and die, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, so is it, is it awake, awakened within you some sort of need to really kind of find yourself, you know, because I know you like that anyway, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, I've, um, well, that, I'd probably say that is probably being my favourite part of the experience, you mm. know, all the materialistic stuff aside, mm. I've, you know, seen a different side of Islam, really, and you know, from what I thought of Islam, I've never explored the religion. I've, uh, I'd say, a few years ago, I'd, you know, I, I was a lot like a lot of Brits. I was, you know, stuff was getting put in the media, and I was like, you know, just following um, things that I, d I didn't explore myself. I'd only seen one side of the story with certain things. So, for me, you know, that's all been dissolved on this trip. I've. You know, my spiritual experience, I've been finding God and getting to know God the past couple of years. Mm. The, the story, how it goes really, like, you know, so I was born a Christian. Mm. 
um, you know, went to a Catholic school, you know, mm. got brought up doing communion and confirmation, yeah. all the rest of it. But I never would go to mass on a regular basis. Mm. I wouldn't pray on, you know, on my own. So then I just fell out of lo lo fell out of touch with God for years, and I just, you know, I was sort of just lost. And it wasn't until I started, basically, I, I got a job through engineering, and mm. I really didn't enjoy it. I thought that's what I wanted to do because my dad, you know, done that and I thought I want to fill his boots sort of thing. Yeah. And it wasn't until, you know, I, I was started looking into entrepreneurship and trying mm. to get out of that that I started, you know, stumbling upon like spirituality and, mm. you know, how it contemplates, you know, your success and all the rest of it and finding mm. God. So I've just been, I've been, been exploring for the past few mm. years of not been exploring, you know, through a mainstream religion, but just taking bits of different cultures mm. and applying Eastern philosophies, mm. Western philosophies, and just merging it into my own little yeah. little belief. You know, while I'm here, I just brought it on myself to learn about Islam and learn yeah. about how, you know, you do it on a on a vast scale. You know, to be able to sit down with Muslims and and, and pray and and just yeah. be in touch and talk about our beliefs mm. and share stories. Yeah. And what What are your take home messages? to people who are watching. They might be Muslims, they might be non-Muslims. You know, what's your take home message to, uh, uh, to people that do have as apprehensions about looking at faith and looking at particularly Muslims and Islam? Through the, for the past couple of years, when I tr try and you know, speak to my friends about you know, my beliefs or you know, what I stand for, if there's no fire to start, then there's no use and me pouring fuel on it. I think you need to find God on your own journey. Um, yeah. You know, even beliefs about other things, you need to, you know, you find your wisdom through yourself. And, you know, there's all good, mm. you know, me telling someone and trying to teach someone, mm. but if they've got no spark to, at first or mm. no sort of foundation to, mm. for me to build, you know, a little bit more mm. advanced stuff that I'm trying to tell them, then there's no, it's hard, it's hard, you know, so. Mm. I've stopped trying to preach and because nine times out of ten it just ends in arguments and what I would say to people is I, I'd be lost without God, I'd be lost without my faith. Like I think it's so easy in today's mm. day and age to get really caught up mentally mm. and you know mm. when you start thinking negative thoughts and mm. it can it spiral out of control so quickly mm. so you know but, things like... But people have negative connotations of religion now could because of our previous experiences mm -hmm. with some of the uh, authorities around religion mm -hmm. in Britain my, my mum was a, a Catholic and she you know she was kind of abused by <laughs> mm -hmm. in the you know in in the uh, in the school that she went to mm -hmm. and then so she's got now and a lot of people had that experience to, to, what, that doesn't mean to say that they have to leave a spiritual path altogether. Yeah. I always say that, you know, but you still live in here. Mm -hmm. You still look at the world around you and say, wow, what an amazing world, you know. Of course, yeah. Who created that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just like when we look at a Aston Martin and we, we look at Aston Martins and we think, wow, that designer was awesome, you know. Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, but why is it that we've... Do you think people, when they're on, on their own and they're at home and... They kind of, you know, they do have those thoughts still. I think it's, um, you know, we live in a world of instant gratification and, you know, materialism and, mm. and distractions. So mm. it's, it's so easy to, you know, I, I know a lot of people, it's a lot of people like in today's society chase pleasure. And it's mm. so easy to mm. distract yourself from, mm. you know, the truer meaning of life. So, you know, when people say, you know, I don't need God because they're distracted by mm. all the stuff, all the other things that's going yeah. on, all the other things yeah. that you can say, you know, that's beautiful and yeah. I really like that and, mm. oh, we've got a new top and all the yeah. rest of it. That's, yeah. that's what it is. I don't think people find God necessarily when things are going good. I think they find God when they're in, you know, a low place in yeah. life. Yeah. And then, you know, they start learning and start mm. finding answers from external, external factors. As human beings, as a big family of human beings, mm. we all share 99.9% .9 of things. We agree mm. on most stuff. 
Mm -hmm. We have we do the same stuff you yeah. might, with different skin colors, different backgrounds, different parents, different you know walks of life and stuff like that. But ultimately, we all know that there's a creator, yeah. And we we we're going to have to go back to that creator. Anything that's created, ultimately, is the responsibility of the the one that created it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense we're going to go back, right? And then in terms of and I think you and me totally agree on that bit. The question is, and obviously one has to do good, but how do you know what good is? Yeah, yeah. So... And I think... That's the, that's the big question. And that's where you need books. Yeah, of And you need profits. And a rule book. Yeah, yeah. you need a book of instructions yeah. like we've mentioned yeah, before. We have. And we've had these discussions before, haven't we? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but this is kind of like, I, I just wanted to have this because I, I, I'm just so interested in this whole um, thing about talking, bringing spirituality back to life, because you know, even in language, in uh, in England, if you remember your grandparents and the grandparents, or you, you ask your mum and dad, they would have been using God in their everyday language mm -hmm. every day. God bless you. God be with you. And these words have now changed to by and hi and yo and touch bruv and <laughs> yeah yeah that's it and that's so so ultimately we are religious we are spiritual but we just need to find out what is that body of evidence and knowledge which can help us you know is it the bible is it the torah is it the you know so the you know very well what we do right is mm -hmm. we look at those books and we say which ones of them have been memorized um preserved so, as you know, the Qur'an is memorized. Mm -hmm. We've just been in the mosque, haven't we, praying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy recited a fairly long um, you know, part of a chapter. Mm -hmm. And he's memorized that. He's memorized the whole of the, the book. <laughs> so it's memorized. Um, this is the thing that um, when we're looking at, of course, there are many elements of truth. And we have to accept the truth in those earlier books and those earlier prophets, all of them. But the, the issue is, is what is preserved now? And that's it. So that, that's what we have to take. And I think when do, people- What's your thoughts on that? Do, mm. you know, um, put certain religions in a negative light, they mm. pick out intricacies mm. and they say, well, why would I do that? You know, they, mm. they do that, you know. Yeah. That's, not, that's not what it's all about. You don't have to follow, mm. you know, the, mm. the books of religions, word for word for word. Obviously, mm. it's good practice. However, mm. you know, there's certain things in certain books that aren't practiced today and in today's day mm. and age, in today's culture, it's not socially acceptable. Mm. So, you know, I think if you read some of these books and pick out, you know, certain moralities and ethics, which do, t which do overlap from different books, by the way, you know, from me speaking, mm to, to um, you know, the people we've met on this trip. We share the same ethics, we share mm. the same beliefs, we just exactly. go, we just, you know, talk about them differently mm. or practice them differently. I think it's because the Quran is written in Arabic. Earlier books have now been translated from Greek, from Hebrew, Aram Aramaic, Hebrew, mm. and then into English. And we've only read the English version. Yeah. So we think, well, hold on a minute, makes more sense that I should be a Christian because it's in English, right? Mm, yeah, but it wasn't delivered in Christian, yeah, uh, in, yeah, yeah. Uh, in English. Uh, one, of my, uh, one of the people that I know very well said, mum was saying, why do you want to go? She was a Muslim, she's decided to be a Muslim. She said, why do you want to go to all of that? There's Arab religions. And she said, well, where do you think Jesus is from? Rotherham. <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that was just yeah, yeah, such yeah. a brilliant answer. Fantastic. You know, and then she started to read about Islam because Islam actually is the latest version of being a Christian, but taking certain elements out, and that's just worshiping God, mm -hmm. being good to you, and, and you know the Ten Commandments of Moses, and all yeah. of that yeah. has just come forward here, and it's a preserved model here, and that's why you get a lot more Muslims who are praying around the world, a lot more Muslims who are are able to talk about their religion and they're, they're not shy to talk about religion. Whereas we, back in the UK now, I find it difficult to talk about. <laughs> like I, I you said. I, I've, I've never talked about yeah. it, you know, with, yeah. with my friends, really. I've, mm. 
you know, discuss like meditation and stuff like that. But in terms of, mm. you know, the big questions in life, it just mm. doesn't really get brought up. You know, we know we want to keep your mouth zip. We grew up with Abrahamic messages and Moses and Abraham and Jesus, peace be upon them all, and John the Baptist and, you know, all of these stories, biblical stories, we grew up with them every single day. And that's completely gone now. But I think, like, you know, in, in terms of, like, the curriculum and, you know, primary schools and high schools, like, mm -hmm. I went to a Catholic school. You, mm -hmm. you know, you're told to pray, but you're not taught why to pray. Exactly. You're not taught how to pray. You know, you're mm -hmm. not they're taught, like, the importances of praying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've only just learned that on this trip, like, the, the scientific side of praying and how much it actually mm -hmm. benefits you mm -hmm. mentally. And it, it, mm -hmm. there's actually a lot of scientific evidence to back that, yeah. you know, it clears your mind and it releases negative energy mm -hmm. from your, your forehead when you, you know, do yes. the salah and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, the, you know, there's, there's science attached to praying. Mm -hmm. We just think, mm -hmm. you know, there's something we have to do before lunchtime. So I think if you mm -hmm. told every child how to pray and how to meditate, I think we'd be li living in a very different mm -hmm country or e e even world you know yeah, we've yeah. got this preserved scripture which is I, I, I feel sad that a lot of people do turn their back on it and I think, I think it's that's why a lot of you know the, how like the respect and the hospitality and all the great things that we've been talking about is so mm. different over here in the Middle mm. East it's because you know in the UK mm. when a child is born you know they're grown up by the parents and by the state through school mm. you know if we're, we're not taught if we don't teach them the rules of how to live a, mm. a happy and you know yeah. a, a good life which is you know how to give and you know all the respect side of life mm. if you're not taught that then and and if the um, if the parents neglect the children mm. then that child's going to grow up to be lost and and mm. not know the importances of yeah. of life however when you come to the middle east if you put a book in front of someone and say, right, that, that's... And I know, obviously, the parents over here do teach the children as well when they mm. teach them, you know, how to read the Quran. However, if you give them the book, which is in, you know, every room in, in, in the Gulf states, it's mm. like, well, that book is how to live a good life. And that's, yeah. you know, that's mm. how you are good. And, you'll, yeah. you know, I always say when you do a good deed, you know, 10 good deeds will return back to you. Yeah. You know, if it's, if it's in the same day or, you know, mm. later... Well, that's actually, that's actually, that's quite amazing because that is true. Yeah. That's from Islam. You, if you do a bad deed, you make an intention to do a bad deed mm -hmm. and you don't ful fulfill that bad deed, you don't get punished for it, right? You get a good reward for it because mm -hmm. you haven't done it. Yeah, yeah. But if you do a good deed, you get 10, 10 <laughs> rewards. Ten. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been an <laughs> awesome discussion, but in Qatar, I mean, your, your, your overall experience of it? I would say Islam, D definitely. Definitely Islam, because for me, I've seen a completely, side, completely different side of something that, you know, at, at first I didn't know nothing about. But I've seen, you know, how brilliant that, that Islam is and, you know, how much it brings a community together mm. and, you know, communities around here are flourishing. You know, the way, you watch a whole neighbourhood, you know, at work, doing the daily life, bang, the time comes, all get together, you know, release any negative energy, you know, thank, th thank your God and mm. show, you know, gratitude. Mm. And then back to your day. I just think mm. that's fantastic. And, mm. you know, I've never, never thought deep enough to explore mm. that. Or obviously while I'm here and I'm, I'm with, you know, Muslims, then I do get to experience that. So... That is something that I will, you know, take mm. home. And, you know, I've got, I've been, you know, kindly gifted the Quran, so I'll, I'll read it. I've, I've started reading a few pages. Thanks very much, Alex. It's been You're awesome. Welcome. And this is hopefully won't be the last time we'll be talking. Salaam alaikum. Uh, wa alaikum salam.